The ocean, the cradle of life on Earth, swept from above by wind and rain. From shallows to depths, it teems with myriad wondrous creatures. China has over 18,000 kilometers of coastline, with more than 11,000 islands, scattered over claimed territorial waters of around 3 million square kilometers. For thousands of years, the Chinese people have lived in harmony with the sea. From north to south, from shore to the sea floor, the seas are vast and changeable. Ice, snow, fierce winds, and roaring waves, living creatures face an endless series of trials. In winter, sea ice gradually covers over the surface of the sea. This is Liaodong Bay on the Bohai Sea, up in the northernmost reaches of China's territorial waters. While problematic for human beings, it provides shelter for the newborns of one creature. The spotted seal pup is just three days old. It can't swim yet, but just awkwardly slither about. Without its mother's protection, it won't survive. Mother and pup are always in close contact with each other, and the mother never lets the child out of sight. A baby spotted seal only lives with its mother for around a month. During this period of time, it will experience molting, weaning, and learning to swim. Then it will leave its mother to fend for itself. The clock is ticking. The Bohai Sea and the north of the Yellow Sea are southernmost breeding grounds of the spotted seal and the southernmost seas to freeze in the northern hemisphere winter. Compared with higher latitudes, the sea ice melts earlier here. The weight of the baby spotted seal has tripled within 10 days. 
spotted seal milk is high in fat to boost the growth rate of the child. It suckles from its mother five or six times every day. Hey, where's mom? This is a signal. The sea ice is melting, and perhaps it's time for the little seal to test the water. With its mother's encouragement, the baby seal leaves the sea ice for the first time. But the water is just too cold. has to follow its mother, though it still wants to escape the water, even just for a little while. A bigger problem has appeared, a male spotted seal looking for a mate. The male seal has spotted the mother and the child, The pup feels threatened and swims to its mother for protection. During the nursing period, female seal does not mate, so all strangers will be viewed as unwelcome intruders. The mother seal swims further off, entering a stretch of open water. She has to avoid this unwanted attention. With the temperatures higher this year, the sea ice is melting earlier than usual. The ice sheet is smaller and thinner than in previous years. The ships passing through keep breaking up the sea ice, so it's not easy for the baby seal to find a safe place to rest. Nobody expected the pup's first swim class to be such a marathon. They still haven't shaken off their pursuer. Boy, is he persistent. Baby seal is exhausted. <laughs> it's not necessarily that easy to find a mate at sea, so the amorous male won't readily give up. Another round of ardent courtship follows. Perhaps this bite will teach him a lesson. The male seal seems undaunted as he follows them like a shadow. He probably won't have to wait too long. Within the month, the pup will separate from its mother to face the future alone.
In winter, the weather is cold and food is scarce. At Rongcheng on the Shandong Peninsula, 2,000 whooper swans have gathered to see the season out. The swan is one of the heaviest of birds of flight. The flock of whooper swans set out from the Mongolian plateau to settle here after a long and arduous journey. It becomes very difficult to forage on land in the frozen winter. However, the whooper swans mainly forage at sea. In these shallow waters, there's a large bed of seagrass. Common eelgrass is the dominant species of seagrass in the north of China. The beds here can sustain up to 10,000 birds. Faced with winter hunger, the competition for food can become intense. Three thousand kilometers away to the south, in the tropical waters of the South China Sea, winter seems to have lost its power, as the temperature sits a comfortable 30 degrees higher. But in fact, the rhythm of life is still controlled by the changing water temperature. The giant triton is a monster sea snail whose shell can reach over half a meter in length. This giant female triton has just finished mating. It spawns nearly 500 egg capsules with around two million eggs. It uses its mouth parts to clean the egg capsules and stir the water to ensure there is sufficient oxygen for each. Giant tritons only reproduce in relatively cool water. They will stand guard over their clutch throughout the winter, foregoing even to forage. With the early arrival of spring in the south, the water temperature quickly rises. The snail larvae discharge from their egg capsules. The adult triton has completed its mission. Emerging from its hiding place, it turns from a devoted guardian to a hungry hunter.
the upper body of the crown of thorns starfish is covered with venomous spines. It feeds on coral. When its population expands, it can wipe out whole reefs, including many of the world's most famous ones. The giant triton and the starfish have identified each other by sense of smell, the chemicals in the water. Now, the chase begins. Having come through a long winter, the Triton is slow. The starfish makes an escape. But with its acute senses, the Triton locks onto its target again. There won't be any error this time. The Triton ups the pace. The starfish tries to defend itself with its venomous spines. But they don't work against the hungry Triton. The sharp, beak-like radula of the giant Triton penetrates the starfish's body and paralyzes it. It then consumes the flesh of the starfish at leisure. Giant tritons are the only natural predator of the crown of thorns starfish. However, the tritons themselves have been threatened by man's desire to seek out their beautiful shells as decorations. The tritons themselves are now in need of protection. Spring returns. Below the surface of the sea, life is driven by the invisible force of the new season. A natural wonder unfolds, a magnificent migration of creatures, great and small. Over half of all bird species around the world make long distance seasonal migrations. The coastal areas of eastern China are now an important point of passage for migratory birds. The river estuaries provide abundant feeding grounds for all kinds of birds. In Shenzhen Bay in Guangdong province, flocks of birds alight to rest and feed before continuing their journey. Everyone has their spot, waiting for the right moment. As the waves stir up the nutrients in the water, shoals of fish swim in to find food. The waiting birds await them. However, northern spoonbills don't eat fish, preferring to feed on plankton. The smaller black-headed gulls mainly prey on smaller fish. The big fish panic and leap out of the water. Then the cormorants make their move.
In the busiest season, over 30,000 birds from around 60 different species gather here. As the waves of migrants leave one after the other, the shoreline gradually quietens down. Migration is not just about food, but also about procreation. Sperm whales are the greatest travelers among the cetaceans. They leave the tropics in spring for the higher latitudes. Their schools include many pregnant mothers-to-be. Their gestation period is around 16 months enough to include at least two migrations. Their safety is ensured by staying close to their group. Navigating over such long distances is crucial to keep themselves on the right course. When required, they can make the loudest sound that any animal on the planet can make. At up to 230 decibels, it's enough to kill a man. Their calls are not only for communicating among the family members, but also to chart the seabed to echolocation. However, with such epic journeys, the whales inevitably get lost from time to time. A lone female appears at Guangdong's Daya Bay. She's pregnant, and she strayed away from a group. She's lost. The near shore waters are death traps for sperm whales. The scattered fishing nets are lethal for them, while low water levels can leave them stranded. Rescue boats arrive. They make noise in the water, hoping to drive her back out to sea. It seems to work as she turns and swims toward the ocean. However, she is alone and exhausted. There's not much humans can do to help. This will be the end of her journey. Far away. A school of whales travels on.
Sperm whales can live up to 70 years old. They spend three quarters of their lives in the ocean's depths, secluded from the world. They might travel a million kilometers in the course of a lifetime. Besides the wandering behemoths of the deep, some remarkable smaller creatures also join in the great spring migration. Taiwan's eastern coast faces the Pacific. Here can be found a tiny migratory fish. What it lacks in size, it makes up for in numbers. It's a type of goby, Psychiopterus japonicus. Locals call it the bald shark. Tens of thousands live for six months in the ocean before returning to fresh water to reproduce. Driven by instinct, the fish follow rivers and streams further and further from the vastness of the ocean. The eastern side of Taiwan is characterized by precipitous mountains with fast-flowing streams. Fish don't have limbs, and they can only go upstream against the current by using their fins. However, the bald shark has a special feature. Their pelvic fins have evolved to join together into a large suction pad with which they can attach themselves to rocks. Moving from one to another, they gradually progress upstream. But trouble awaits in the form of another type of goby, the hungry Candidus goby. Even more alarming hunters have also been awaiting their turn. Egrets are hungry feeders, and this is the finest banquet they'll see all year. Survival depends on luck, persistence, and overwhelming numbers. But for the individual, mostly luck. As summer comes, the tiny fish return to their birthplace. These bald sharks are outstanding climbers. Barely six centimeters in length, they can be found high up in the mountains, up to 80 kilometers away from the sea. With the water temperature continuing to rise, life beneath the waves becomes ever more active. 
But as the variety and the number of ocean creatures peak, so does the intensity of the competition. Stronger predators take advantage of their speed and power, while the vulnerable rely heavily on their means of escape. In early summer, a unique looking creature appears in southeast coastal areas. Slow moving and soft bodied, conspicuous in their bright colors and lacking any protective shell, the sea slug is an unexpected bold adventurer. The bright colors are the reason for its confidence, a warning to would-be predators that their bodies are highly poisonous. The two long chemicosensory rhinophores on its head give this type of sea slug the name sea hares. This variety of sea slug is a supreme escape artist When it senses a threat, it unfolds its body and makes a quick getaway. The flowing folds of its movement lead it to be known as the Spanish Dancer. In the sand beds near the shore, there's another kind of widely distributed sea hare. The striking blue spots all over their bodies look like eyes. Their real eyes are actually the inconspicuous little black spots on their head. Their sole orifice is on their back. They are ragged sea hares, escapologists who excel in camouflage. The fierce tempered mud crab has built a hidey hole for itself with the greatest of care, ready to enjoy a meal undisturbed. However, a sea hare intrudes into its territory. So the mud crab decides to teach it a lesson. The frightened sea hare releases a paralyzing toxic purple fluid to cover its escape. Summer sees the creatures of nature not only wrestling with each other, but also an irresistible force. Deep in the reeds of the coast of the East China Sea at Chongming Island, one species of bird has one thing on its mind. The nests are supported by multiple reed stems over a meter from the ground. The chicks are delicately screened from the outside world. The reed parrotbill is endangered by disappearing habitats in many parts of the world.
There's an abundance of food in summer, but there's never any time to relax. The warm seawater creates huge tropical cyclones, resulting in powerful typhoon winds. They sweep the coasts with overwhelming strength, bringing massive storm waves. Chongming Island is about to be devoured by one such furious storm, and the reed nests are highly vulnerable. The storm causes massive damage to the breeding site. There is no escape for the reed parrotbill family. The reeds are broken, the nest askew, and the chicks thrown out of the nest. However, there is still one egg ready to hatch. The parent bird returns. It won't leave the nest as long as there's offspring to rear. The nest is on the verge of falling. The last chick to lose its life at any minute. The crisis continues. Below the reeds, there was a world of crabs. They are opportunists who never miss an easy meal. Their powerful pincers can easily tear the baby birds apart. The baby birds' bodies are scattered around the nest. They are a feast from heaven for the many crabs below. The smell of the body seeps through the reeds, attracting more and more crabs. The parent bird flies off to forage. As the crabs flock in, the bottom of the reeds become crowded. Some of the crabs start to climb. There are so many crabs down there. If one crab gets into the nest, the last chick will die. The parent bird is totally unaware of the danger and is still foraging. A female crab that has spawned climbs the reed. 
Summer is also the breeding season for the crabs. Both species need food. The crab comes close, but wanders away from the nest. The threat is spotted, and the parent bird returns. The reed parrot bill manages to keep its last chick, its last hope, in this summer. Summer passes to autumn. It's the harvest season for mankind. Reeds disappear, and the lack of habitats for the reed parrot bills threatens them with hunger. In different seasons, they face different tests. As if answering a silent call from the sea, migration begins again. Deep in the sea or high in the sky, nature's creatures are all motivated by the irresistible impulse to live. Only death can thwart them. The freezing winter, the stormy summer, the spring and autumn, where their arduous journeying are all magnificent scenes from the movie of life. But nature has no prearranged script. Every actor must struggle to keep its role alive, to survive, and to reproduce. <laughs>